.NET libraries, the ready-made libraries in the .NET. Okay, uh, as I said, you get there are huge amount of libraries are there. Okay, these are generally called as class libraries, CL class libraries. We'll be calling as a BCL and FCL. Okay, we'll be calling as base class libraries. Okay, and frame class libraries. Okay, so libraries are two types: base class libraries and frame class libraries, which are ready to consume, available in the form of DLL. Okay, next one. So .NET uh, can communicate with any database. Okay, so do remember that .NET here. In order to work with .NET, work with .NET. Okay, there are many languages. In order to work with .NET, there are many languages. Okay, uh, and coming to the database. So there is a lot of problems while working with the .NET data types. In order to overcome that one, data types has been released as a separate hierarchy called as common type system. Okay, so you can understand that it is okay a hierarchy. Okay, with all the data types supported in .NET. Okay, it's a hierarchy. Uh, with all the each and every data type which is available in the .NET are provided in a separate hierarchy called as CTS. Okay, so do remember that whether you use okay VB.NET or CHash.NET, okay, the data types will come from CTS. Okay, system dot object is a namespace. Okay, contains all structures. Okay, all structures for data types. So you can understand that there is a very big problem while communicating from one language to another language, like a data, data type. So you know that Java integer is four bytes, C integer is two bytes, C C character is one byte, Java character is four byte, two bytes. So like this, integration problems are required. Integration problems are there. while coming to .NET, those sort of problems are not there. Why? Because .NET is coming with its programming language, okay, uh, languages, and all the languages are going to be consuming their data types from the CDS. Okay, as I said, you have 40, 50 languages which are there. Every language have to consume their data types from the same place called as a CDS, common type system. Hope you understand what is common type system. Common type system is nothing but a uh, data types which are available in the dot. And do remember, all the data types are available in the system dot object. Okay, we'll understand them in detail in a bit. So coming to the next one. Okay. So class libraries, as I said you that there are huge amount of class libraries are there. Okay. And it's having a very powerful framework. Okay. And it's having a database connectivity layer. So what I can do is dot net is very comfortable okay to communicate with any database okay and any data source. So you can communicate with uh, uh, databases like Oracle, SQL Server, SQL, etc. Okay, and connecting uh, files like uh, XML, okay, Excel, etc. Okay, and uh, uh, to communicate, we'll be using a ADO.NET, okay, which provides different methodologies like ADO.NET. Okay, you can use a link, you can use a NGT framework, etc. Models which are allow you to communicate with the database. Okay, you can communicate with the database using ADO.NET. You can use Linku, you can use an NDD framework, okay, and many things are there like an hibernate, etc. Many things are there which are used to communicate with the database. Then in order to work with this, there are mainly three specifications. Okay. So three specifications. Three specifications, okay, about .NET framework to develop applications. Okay, so first one is mobile specification. It's not the first one, it's the last one. Mobile specification for developing applications for tab and mobiles. Okay, Windows form specification for console applications, Windows applications, Windows services, 
and class libraries. So I can I think I've given you you can say that Visual Studio Express this is for mobile specification. This is for mobile specification. App specification. This is for Windows specification. Okay. And what about the last one? This is for ASP daughter specification. Web for ASP. Web for ASP. Clear? So we understand the architecture, okay, which we have been already discussed, which works in other operating systems. Okay, we have a powerful runtime. So CLR is a common language runtime. Okay. So CLR. Okay. So CLR is a common language runtime. Okay. It is an RT for .NET. What is an RT for runtime? Okay, which is responsible for compiling the code and executing the application. CLR, common language runtime. Okay. Next. Base class libraries, as I said you that we have many uh, hundreds of about hundred thousands of libraries. Okay. Data access layers. You have a separate layers for communicating to data. We can use a reward of it. We can use a link providers. We can use the XML data providers, etc. Okay. And while working with uh, different applications, you have uh, services. We can go for workflows and all. It's not related to our subject. Okay. We can develop the web applications. We can develop the Windows applications. You can develop something called mobile applications, etc. Okay. And different languages you can use. As I said, there are many languages are there. Okay. And we have seen what is CLR, what is assembly. Okay. CLR is nothing but a common language and time. Assemblies are nothing but a class libraries. Programming languages are the languages which are used for application development. We already seen that what is a CLR, what it is going to be do. CLR execution model, as I said, that every programming language will compile and the compiled language is going to be generating the IL code and the IL code will take the support of JIT and the JIT will convert into the native code whereas native code is the operating system standard, standalone code, understandable code. Okay. Same thing. So while working with the .NET, see, uh, in order to work with .NET, the codes has been separated into two types called as managed codes and unmanaged codes. Okay, any managed code can communicate together. Okay, so here, uh, as I said, you that many languages like C sharp .NET, VB .NET, VC plus plus .NET, etc. Okay, all these languages are managed codes. So any language which is not supported by .NET called as unmanaged codes. So unmanaged codes cannot communicate with the .NET, and managed codes can be communicated. Example, I can say that I can't use C for writing .NET application. Okay, like this something called as unmanaged code, or else I'm directly using the Pascal without a plugin called as unmanaged code. So whereas unmanaged codes cannot communicate, whereas managed codes can be communicated. Okay, next. You can see this managed codes are designed using the managed codes are developed using the dotted CLRs and the managed codes directly done using the program compilers. Okay, so you know that who it will be good. Okay, so what are the components of CLR? Generally, working with components of CLR, we have many components. Okay, CTS is there. What a CTS will do? CTS contains all the data types. Okay, where it's one of the best component of the CLR. Okay, the next one, IL. CTL will convert to the next one to the IL. I mean, your programming language will be converted into IL. Okay, IL takes the support of JIT. JIT will convert into the native code. Okay, finally, you'll be having one more component in CLR which takes the responsibility like freeing up the memory and all with the help of garbage collector feature. And I said you that there are different different data types supported in the .NET. All data types are supported in .NET called as CTS, common type systems. Okay, you'll be understanding this one in a bit clearly. So IL, what it'll do? Intermediate on JIT will convert IL to native code. Okay, which we have been see. I explained this one, so that's the reason I'm scrolling the slides. Okay, native code. Native code is nothing but a particular operating system understandable code. Okay, which is very faster in execution. 
garbage collectors.